Mark your own. W would you like a quiz with which to follow on? Oh, you did find it. I knew you would. I like number one. I like number one. I like number one. Number one is a nice question. Suppose this mass begins from rest. Okay. Mass one is 2.8 kilograms. Mu is the coefficient of friction is 0 0.12. The angle of inclination is 52 degrees. Find the time it would take for this mass to slide a distance of 6 meters down the slope. So what this question is asking me to find is T. I know VI is 0. I know D is 6. Do I know V final? Nope. I think what I'm really being asked to find is the acceleration. Because if I find the acceleration, then I think I can use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, and I can find T. So even though this question is saying find the time, I'm going to be spending most of my time, I think, finding the acceleration. How am I going to do that? I think I'm going to label my forces. M1G, normal force. Friction. I think I would break M1G into two components, parallel and perpendicular. M1G perpendicular, M1G parallel, and we said that this angle and this angle end up being the same, which they do. So to find the acceleration, I'm going to ask myself, hey, who's winning? Well, which way is this thing accelerating? down the hill. Who's winning then? Okay, so my equation is going to be m1g parallel. So I'm going to list all the forces that are parallel to the... Oh, the other one is friction. Winner or loser? What if I was sliding up the hill? Which way would friction be acting? In fact, I would have two winners. I would have winner plus winner instead of winner minus loser if we were sliding up the hill, which is why sliding up the hill stops so fast because there's two forces slowing you down, right? Anyways, friction is a loser, and there's just one mass, so it's going to be that. Uh, friction is what times what? That's a deafening silence. Makes me a little worried. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force, and it ain't mg. It is m1g perpendicular. Uh, let's do a bit of trig. Parallel is opposite hypotenuse. I think parallel is sine m1g sine of, was it 52 degrees? Yep minus mu, and I think perpendicular ends up being m1g cosine of 52 degrees, and that equals ma. This one's kind of nice. Kara, is there a mass in every single term? Then in this case, mass is cancel. I'll take that. I think the acceleration is going to end up being 9.8 sine 52 minus, what did I say the coefficient of friction was? 0.12 9.8 cos 52 and I get an acceleration of uh, something or other. Let's see. Oh, I went through this yesterday. You made it. Glad you made it. Let's try this again. 9.8 sine 52 
minus 0.12 times 9.8 times the cosine of 52. And I get a lovely acceleration of 6.998. I was tempted to round that to 7, but since this isn't my final answer, I'll actually carry Mitchell 6.998. I'll carry a few extra sig figs. Probably won't make a difference, but I'll be paranoid. Now I'd like to find T. I know that D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, but VI is zero, which means that D equals AT squared over two. There's the one half. I think what this really means is that T equals 2 times D divided by A square root, which is going to be 2 times 6 divided by 6.998 square root. 2 times 6 divided by answer square root of that. Do you guys get an answer of 1.31 seconds? People nodding. So that's for full marks. If you're wondering how I gave out part marks on this one, I did something like this. Did I give you quiz 2 version 1 or version 2? What's it say on the top? Version 1. That's how I gave out the part marks. But if you got the final answer, one mark. About a half mark if I saw that, half mark for that, one mark for the acceleration, half mark for writing that, half mark for that, half mark for the answer. Question two, Atwood machine. Did they give me both masses? Then I'll treat this as one mass. I'll go winner minus loser equals mass of both times A. They only give me one mass. They'll give me enough information that I can target that one mass and find all the other stuff and use the other stuff to find the missing mass. Anyhow, when I did that, I got an acceleration of 1.75 meters per second squared, and I got a tension of 61 newtons. Yes? I think Atwood machines are kind of from last year, so I didn't do a big song and dance about that one. If you want, 61 newtons, yeah. No? Yes? And I used uh, M1 because tension was winning and it was easier to get tension by itself. All right. A student of mass M places a bathroom scale on a skateboard. What does a scale measure? Does a scale measure mass? Now what is, it measures normal force. So what this question is, talk, as soon as they talk about a scale, I'm always thinking to myself, self, normal force, normal force, normal force. He then rolls forward on level ground while standing on the scale, which is still on top of the skateboard. What will the scale read? More than M, less than M, or M? Yep, I think so. Now the student rolls down the skateboard, sorry, rolls the skateboard down a ramp, which is inclined at an angle. I was typing this up on a Mac years ago, and I couldn't find the theta, so, but I could find that funky symbol. It's a phi, I think. But anyways, at some angle while standing on the scale, which is still on top of the skateboard, what will the scale read? More than M, less than M, or M? Brett, I agree. Convince me. Now, if you just write that on a quiz, I'll give you marks on a test. So here's what I said. Scale measures normal force. And I said the normal force is equal to mg parallel. Probably if you drew a little ramp with a good free body diagram, that would really help. And mg parallel, I said, in this case, is mg cos. 
and it's always going to be less than mg because cosine is a decimal, which means if you're multiplying by decimal, your answer is always going to be smaller. If you answered something along those lines, if you use the Blackaby approach, if you said, well, if it was vertical, normal force is zero and level. If, if, so if you use the Blackaby theorem, I'll give you full marks there. If you're not quite sure how to mark this one, lawyer with me afterwards. Okay. And the last one. Assume no friction. I would have no problem including friction, by the way. It means you got an extra force, one extra force. If mu1 equals 10 and mu, uh, sorry, mass 1 equals 10 and mass 2 equals 4 and the angle of inclination is 56 degrees, what did I ask you to find? Tension? Oh, acceleration and then tension. Okay. What's the first thing I'm going to do here? I, well, not dealt the pictures there, but I labeled my free body diagram. So I said on mass one, it's going to be gravity down, tension up. On mass two, gravity straight down, tension along the rope. And which is the bigger mass? I know this one is winning. And if this one is bigger, it would be a bit trickier because depending on the incline, this might not be enough to make it down the hill. But if the bigger mass is hanging in midair, that's going to be the winner on a hill. So I said, okay, uh, friction is in that direction. Although, uh, did I include friction? Why do I have friction here? Oh, did I do a part C? Oh, for part C, gotcha. So I added friction later on for part C. That makes sense. For now, I said uh, M1G is winning. Tension losing, tension winning, and M2G parallel is losing. Winner minus loser plus winner minus loser equals the mass of both of them times A. Tensions cancel, M1G. Uh, M2G parallel was M2G sine. I divided by the mass of both of them to get the A by itself, and I got 4.7 meters per second squared. Then to find tension, I could have used this mass, but this mass is much cleaner. Uh, tension is, w uh, no, M1G is winning, tension is losing. M1G is winning, tension is losing equals M1A, because Joel I'm looking at a single mass. But it's pretty easy to get tension by itself. I plus the T over here, I minus the M1A over there, and tension Z was 51 newtons. Part C. What would the minimum magnitude of the force of friction have to be in order to keep this entire system stationary. If it's stationary, what's the acceleration? Zero. I said, okay, really what we're saying is this, oh, I just looked at one mass, tension, which was 51, minus M2G, that has to cancel out friction. You could have done a bigger equation. I just looked at the one mass. I said, oh, no, actually, apparently I went M1G minus M2G parallel. That equals friction because uh, it's winner minus loser equals zero. I plus this over. I was in a big rush. Friction is M1G plus M2G sine theta. Friction ends up being 65.5. I don't think I did a great job of explaining that, but I'm seeing a bunch of you nodding your heads like you got it anyways. So. Is that right? Yes? So if you can be so kind as to give yourself a score out of, whatever this is out of, 17. So any questions from last day's homework? Gave you a couple of nasties. We looked at the lawnmower question. There is going to be a lawnmower type question on your test. I'll tell you that right now. Where the picture looks something like this. Although... I may also, instead of pushing down, I may have you pulling up with a rope instead. In which case, your normal force will be a little bit different. In fact, it will be less, not bigger. Anyhow, any questions from the homework that you wanted me to go over? I assigned one, two, three, and uh, I think that was it, yeah? Yeah? Sorry? Two? Love two. So, here's my mass.
we have good old MG down. Now it says it's being pulled upwards at an angle like that, Brett, uh, with 300 newtons of force. Definitely there would be friction in this direction. Is that okay, Brett? And because I'm pulling up, I'm canceling out some of gravity. I'm pretty sure the normal force is smaller than gravity. In fact, I know it is. Because you're lifting up as you pull up. And the normal force is always canceling out mg. Well, no. You're, since you're canceling out some of it, it's only canceling out what's left. Is that okay? I would also then call this fx and fy. A says, find the normal force. Well, the normal force this time, it looks to me, Kayla, that Fn plus Fy equals mg. The two ups cancel out the down. Normal force plus Fy equals mg. Is that okay, Brett? Which means uh, normal force is going to be mg minus Fy and Fy. I think it ends up being signed, but I are you okay on the the trig part if I let you take that part on your own? Yes, right. Here's your angle opposite. I think it end, ends up being sine in this case. I think this is backward. Y is sine again because we're not at a wonky angle. Uh, B friction is going to be mu times whatever your answer was in part A. I shouldn't put an A there. You'll think that's acceleration. It's going to be mu times the normal force, which is uh, from there. Is that okay? C. Who's winning? Not the 300. The 300 would only be winning if you were accelerating upwards and diagonally. But which way are you accelerating? To the right. Which force is the to the right force? Yeah, okay. It's going to be winner minus loser equals MA. Fx, I think it's going to be the 300 times cosine, but I have to do the trig to double check that. Friction, you just figured out in part B. Mu times the normal force, and you figure the normal force out in part A. Is that enough of a kickstart, I think? Yeah? I'll let you crunch the numbers. By the way, um, what if it was not accelerating? What if it refused to move? What would your acceleration be? Zero. What could you tell me about these two forces then? They're the same size. That might give you a different way to find friction. Certainly, if you didn't know the mass, that would give you a different way because you'd know the force that you were tugging at and it wasn't moving. You could figure it out that way. Any others? There's only three questions, so... Any of you have any questions from the great big ultimate forces review? Now remember, I would like you to hand in this when you write your test, if at all possible. I'll take it afterwards, but it's really dumb to do this after you've written the test. If you haven't clued in, if you go through this, you'll have seen about 95% of the questions on the test. And the answer keys are online, so you can double check. The answer keys are attached, but the actual answer key, solution key showing all my steps is online. Any of these that you glanced at that you're going, and by the way, some of these are nasty, which is great. Um, the five, not too bad. A little bit nasty. Oh. I like number 10. Seventeen is pretty tough. Anyhow, any of these you want me to go over? 
Number three. Went too far, Mr. Duke. Should have stopped there. Okay. Um, I think I sort of like number three in that I think there's a question on your test. I think it's multiple choice. I think where I say to you, uh, hey, I didn't give you one of the masses. What you going to do? Okay. Here it wants you to find the mystery mass. How am I going to start out here, Caitlin? Same old, same old. Absolutely. Mitch, you want to sit up and follow along? Maybe just be thinking. Get, maybe you want to get out the review. If you've lost the review, I might have a couple of extra copies floating around, or else it's online. You can print it up. Uh, Caitlin, I would go like this. M1G tension. Yes? And M2G normal force tension. Friction? It'd be one extra force if they did. Do I know both masses? Then I can't use my winner minus loser equals M1 plus. In fact, I have to start this one out by looking at an individual mass. Which mass will I look at? The one that I know. I'm going to write a force equation just for this guy. Just for this guy, who's winning? Tension. Who's losing? No one, although if I had friction, it wouldn't be that hard care for me to add in friction u times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 it's mg in this case. And because I'm just looking at one mass, Kara, it's going to be m1a. Do I know mass 1? Sorry, m2a. I'm looking at this mass, my bad. Do I know mass 2? Yes. A. Oh, I can get the tension then pretty easy. Tension is going to be 4 times 1.5. Heck, I can do that in my head. Tension is going to be 6 newtons. Can you see where I'm going to go now? What? Now I'm going to go look at mass 1. Who's winning? Who's losing? M1G minus tension equals M1A. Do I know M1? No. Do I know G? So I'm going to write this as 9.8 M1, because we're used to having the number and then the variable from math 9. I'm going to treat M1 like an X. Do I know tension? Yeah, minus 6 equals, do I know M1? No, do I know it? Yeah, 1.5 M1. Caitlin, how would I solve that? Wouldn't I uh, get the M1s to the same side? How? I think I'd minus the 9.8 over, because I don't want to have nothing over here. So I'm going to minus the 9.8 M1. And I'll get negative 6 equals whatever 1.5 take away 9.8 is, because those are like terms. right? It's like, an, it's like M1 is an X. It's really 9.8X minus 6 equals 1.5X. Uh, 1.5 take away 9.8. Negative 8.3 M1. Caitlin, final step. How can I get the M1 by itself? And wonderfully, the negatives cancel. I get a positive mass, which is good, because we're not dealing with antimatter here or anything like that, right? Negative 6 divided by negative 8.3. And you end up with a mass of 0.72222 uh, B. So if they don't give me a mass, no big whoop. Look at the one mass that you do know, find everything you can from there, bring whatever you found over to the mass that you don't know, and solve for that single solitary mass. Is that okay? Yep. Any others? I think there's one more like that somewhere else in this, by the way, where you also find, I think there's one or two more where you're finding a mass. Thank you. All right. Then we're going to begin the next unit, which uh, I'm going to teach as though it's brand new. I covered a bit of it. I don't think Mr. Camozzi covered any of it, so I'm going to teach it from scratch. So we're going to start this next lesson. I don't think I'll get through this whole lesson. I might. We'll see. Lots of terminology here. Lesson one, unit three. Work and energy. Work. 
first of all, work is a physics term. And we got a bit of a problem here, Joel, because uh, it's also an English word. When you guys think I'm doing work, you think I'm getting tired, I'm getting sweaty. That, that's not what we mean in physics. It has a specific physics meaning. Now, it is a scalar. Would I be a good teacher if I confiscated that game for a couple of days as a wonderful lesson about the importance of education versus going and standing in line in a store and missing things? I might. Right now I'm on the fence. In other words, don't push me, right? It is defined as the product of the force component in the direction of motion and the distance moved. Say what? Work is defined as this. Force times distance. Oh, except both of these have to be in the same direction. In the same direction. Okay? The equation then, symbol for work is a capital W, and the equation is force times distance, FD. Okay. What are the units for work? Well, what do I measure force in? Newtons. What do I measure distance in? It's a Newton meter, but this one is so important, we've given it its own name. We call this a jewel symbol, capital J, named after a scientist whose last name was Jewel. Okay. Example one. How much work do you do when you lift a 35 kilogram mass to a height of 1.5 meters? Well, work equals force times distance. The force is mg. And you know what? We actually frequently call a vertical distance a height. We often use, in fact, we'll talk about work done against gravity. We're going to call it mgh. The mass is 35. G is 9.8. Isn't it negative? It's a scalar. And H is 1.5 meters. How many joules of work did Joel do? I know it feels strange using the word work and Joel in the same sentence, but we'll, you know, use your imagination. What do you get? 500? 540? 514? Point what? So not 514. Round off properly. 515? 515 joules of work. Okay? 
Is that a lot? You know what? 515, you wouldn't want to do that 20 times in a row. You'd be tired. So that lets you know kind of 500 joules of energy is a reasonable chunk. How much work does a hiker do on a 50 kilogram backpack if he carries it to the top of the 750 meter mountain? Well, here's the nice thing. Don't write this down, but no matter what the mountainside looks like, I really don't care because the only force that this hiker is resisting is gravity, which means all I'm interested in is the vertical displacement. I don't care about any of the horizontal junk that went on. None of this matters. All I know is work is force times distance. And if you're carrying something up a mountainside, the force that you're doing work against is gravity. And the distance up a mountainside is h. It's going to be 50 times 9.8 times 750. What do you get? What do you get? Three hundred and sixty-seven thousand five hundred three six seven five zero zero. Now we'd better do our sig figs. So how about three point six eight times ten to the one two three four joules? Fifty kilograms. How many pounds is fifty kilograms? If you're not sure, multiply it by two point two. What's 50 times 2.2? What's 50 times 2.2? Anyone? Sorry? 110. So that'd be like piggybacking someone who weighed 110 pounds up a mountainside. Would you be tired? Probably. In other words, 367,500 joules, that's a fair chunk of work. The ball at the end of the example three, the ball at the end of the rope is following a circular path because of a constant force exerted on the ball by the rope in a direction towards the center of the circle. How much work is done on the ball by this force? What if I'm doing this? Okay. How much work is this string doing on the mass on the end of this? Why is the answer zero? Why is the answer, it is zero by the way, why is the answer zero? First of all, what did I say? Work is what times what? But what was the condition about the force and the distance? Same direction. Now read the question. Which way does it say the force is acting? Toward the center. Let's pause this. Suppose I could freeze it right here. The force is acting towards the center, but which way is the ball moving? That way. Are the force and the distance in the same direction? Then we would say, mathematically, I'm doing no work. I'm doing no work. Trevor, come over here, please. I'd like you to stand right here, put two hands on your shoulder. Better your shoulder. Your shoulders are right there. Push the wall over as hard as you can. Push. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Now, if I have Trevor do that for a long time, will you get tired? Will you get tired? Yeah. Yes. He's not doing any work, though. Wait a minute, he's getting tired. Has nothing to do, thank you Trevor, has nothing to do with work. Work is what times what? Force times distance. Kara, was he exerting a force? Yes. Was the wall moving a distance? No. No work being done. Well, why is he getting tired then? Okay, now we're going to get a little bit specific. Actually, Trevor, you were doing work, but not on the wall. When you were giving Trevor a piggyback, you were doing work and not on the wall, 
what was happening was your muscles vertically were compressing and shrinking, compressing and shrinking, and there's the force and in the same distance as gravity. Okay? So I should, I should be clarifying that. Uh, in general, a force in the same direction of motion like F1 on the next page does positive work. A force in the opposite direction of motion like F2 does negative work. You can have negative work and positive work. Positive work means you're gaining energy. Negative work means you're losing energy. Oh, I'm a physics nerd and I threw that in on the side. Need to figure out how to do this, Mr. Duick. Oh, use your pen. In 1977, turn your paper sideways. Let's see what it says here. In Northamshire, England, David Purley's race car crashed and his speed dropped from 174 kilometers per hour to zero, Kayla, in 0.66 meters. He had 29 fractures, three dislocations. His heart stopped six times, but he survived. As far as we know, this is the human being who has experienced the most G-forces and lived to tell about it. How many Gs did he experience? All right, let's see if we can calculate this guy's acceleration. What's V initial? 174 kilometers per hour. What? 174 what? I can't do math with kilometers. How do I go from kilometers per hour to meters per second? Times by 3.6 or divide by 3.6? Which one? I heard both. Which one? I mean, again, I'm hearing both. Which one? I'll give you an easy way to figure it out. What's the speed limit on the freeway? You have your driver's licenses. You're getting it. What's the speed limit on the freeway? The easy one. No, freeway, not hot. Freeway. 100. You've all been on the freeway. Speed limit there is 100. Yes? Can you go, our vendor, 100 times 3.6, please? You guys okay with me here? Are you traveling? So you're saying on the freeway you're traveling 360 meters every second. You're traveling three football fields every second on the freeway. I don't think you times by 3.6. You know what you do? That, by the way, that's how I figure it out every time. I say, well, 100 times 3.6. No, on the freeway, I don't go four football fields a second. Not a chance. So it's divided by 3.6. What's VI? I? No, it's 174 divided by 3.6. Come on, what's VI? Sorry? 48.3. What's V final? What's D? What equation has those and A in it? I think it's going to be VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D. What acceleration did this race car driver experience and survive? Sorry, I can't do this up here because i got my screen flipped sideways. Which means my, well, if I do that, it'll just terrify you guys. What do you get? Where's your calculator? Sorry? Okay. What'd you get? What'd you get? Okay, a little more participation would help, boys and girls. Did you get 699? Okay, I, I don't know. I can't do mine up here because my calculator is sideways. What do you get? That's why I want more of you to try this. By the way, Brett, how many numbers are on top? Two, you did put the top in brackets, yes? What do you get? I, I, I need a consensus answer here, folks. What'd you get, Brett? No, 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 no. what'd you get? Okay, let's wait. 1,767, anybody else? Yes, anybody else? Caitlin, what'd you get? Sorry? How many G's is that? Divide it by 9.8, please.
180 G's in that car accident. That's the equivalent of 180 people doing a dog pile on him, and he survived. Okay, so he's the person. At least four years ago, when I last checked, he is the person who has survived the biggest deceleration and lived to tell about it, or at least lived long enough to tell people. I mean, there may have been people that survived for a brief moment after an accident in something more than this, but they didn't survive long term. Here endeth the nerd part. Turn the page. Or next page over. So we said this. Work can be positive or negative. Work in the same direction of motion is positive work. Work in the opposite direction of motion is negative work. Although work can be positive or negative, it doesn't have direction. This doesn't mean direction. It means losing or gaining. child is pulling a wagon along the driveway and they're exerting a force F along the handle of the wagon. How would you calculate the work done by the child on the wagon? Here's the wagon. There's my force F. Here's angle theta. What direction is the wagon moving? Diagonally upwards? No, which way is the wagon going to roll? So I need the force that's in the same direction because work equals force times distance. Yes, but the force and the distance have to be in the same direction. In fact, what you would want to use is Fx. And I think you're going to find that the cosine of theta equals fx over f. In fact, Emily, if I wanted to get fx by itself, what would I do? And as a matter of fact, the actual formula for work is f times d cosine theta. What if theta is 0 degrees? What is the cosine of 0 degrees? Can you try that on your calculator right now really quickly? Brianna, what is it? 1, because that means you're in the same direction. You don't need to think. Uh, oh, what if theta is 180 degrees? What's the co what if you're pulling backwards? What's the cosine of 180 degrees? Negative 1. That's why we said in this direction is positive work, in this direction is negative work. Oh, what if you're pulling straight up? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero, no work. And that, some of that should be familiar to you from our circle from last year. But that, that's one of the many, many reasons why the trig values have the values that they do. Work equals what times what? It's force times distance. Ah, only if the force is constant. What if the force is not constant? What if the force is changing? Well, as it turns out, work is also the area under a force versus distance graph. Here's a graph. We're graphing force versus distance. And it looks like the force is increasing. When we started out, it was 1 Newton. But eventually, the force finished up at 3 newtons. And the question asks, how much work is done moving this object from 2 meters to 6 meters? I guess we're pushing on something. Well, there's 2 meters. There's 6 meters. You know how much work was done in moving the object? That much work. The area. Now, I always ask this, because maybe there is a math nerd here. What shape is that that we've just colored in, first of all? Is it a square? No. Is it a triangle? No. Is it a rectangle? No. This is a side that has, this is a shape that has two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. What do we call that? I heard someone say it. 
trapezoid. It's called a trapezoid. Now, believe it or not, you guys with me back there? Okay, please stop, because every time I glance back there, you're chatting. Believe it or not, if, if it's about physics, good, but still. There is the formula for the area of a trapezoid. There is one. Does anybody know it? I'll tell you why you don't know it. You don't need it. Every single trapezoid is also automatically a triangle and a rectangle. Draw that line in and call the top area area 1 and the bottom area area 2. The reason we don't make you memorize the formula for the area of a trapezoid is nice. It's 1 half a plus b times h for what it's worth is, well, do you know the area of a rectangle? What's the equation for the area of a rectangle? Really? <laughs> Length times width, we usually say, but base times height works. Do you know the equation for the area of a triangle? What's the area of a triangle? It has base and height in it. Brianna. Because a triangle is actually also half of a rectangle, so that's why it's divided by 2. So since you know both of those, in theory, we don't memorize a trapezoid. Area 1 is going to be base times height divided by 2. It's a triangle. How long is the base of that triangle? Look at your graph. Sorry? 4. What's the height of the triangle, Jacob? Don't say 3 because it's not. 1. From here to here. Jacob, in your head with no calculator, can you go 4 times 1 divided by 2? Yep, what? Okay, so the top area has 2 joules. Area 2 is a rectangle, which is length times width, or base times height. I really don't care how you think about it. What's the length of the rectangle, Emily? What's the width of the rectangle, Emily? What's the area of the rectangle, Emily? So the total work ten point zero joules. If that was one person and they were pushing something, they lost 10 joules of energy, and that object gained 10 joules of energy. You got 10 joules tired of doing this. Okay? So there's actually now two expressions for work. Force times distance if the force is not changing. Or it's the area under a force times distance graph. Which makes sense to me, by the way, because didn't you tell me that area was length times width? Force times distance, if I look at the units, it should be the area. Energy. Energy is the ability to do work. If you have the ability to exert a force over a distance, then you have energy. It's amazing. I said the word energy and I saw four yawns. You were the final. Don't worry. Kara was the initial. There's two in between. It's amazing. Energy is the ability to do work. If you're asking, does an object have energy, what you're really asking is, can it exert a force over a distance? Does this gun have energy, my Nerf dart gun? Can it exert a force over a distance on the projectile? Yes. It has stored energy. We're going to call that potential energy. There's all sorts of different types of energy. The energy of motion. We call this Ke stands for kinetic energy. So I'm going to fire this dart gun at Matt. Does this dart have kinetic energy? Yes, when it hit Matt, hits Matt, it can exert a very small force over a distance, but it's moving. 
anything that's moving and has mass has kinetic energy. Has kinetic energy. Okay? You tried to catch it. I figured you would be athletic enough to dodge or catch it. That's why I didn't pick the rip. Oh, never mind. Well, no, Brett would have just flopped and taken the charge, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. If I had a baseball instead of a tennis ball, and I said, I've had enough of Joel, and I'm going to throw this right at his jaw <laughs> as hard as I can, does the baseball have energy? When it hits him, will it be able to exert a force over a distance? Anything moving has kinetic energy. We're going to be looking an awful lot at kinetic energy this year. Heat. Heat is another form of energy. Heat is usually created by friction. Can heat do work? How do you think your car engines work? I think steam engines work. How do you, yeah, absolutely, heat can do work. It can exert a force over a distance. Gravitational potential energy. This is stored energy due to an object's position. It's stored, the word for stored in physics is potential. It has potential energy, but it hasn't been used yet. Does this have gravitational potential energy right now? Yeah, not only that, I can increase its gravitational potential energy. To do that, I had to do work on this object. I gave it some of my energy. It now has more energy, so it'll do more damage. I can't do this much longer. Right? It's surprisingly heavy. Okay, you're going to look left. You can do it with a textbook. I suddenly realized I can't hang that much longer. It might actually drop. Lossy didn't want it. Okay. In fact, you can give any object at all some gravitational potential energy just by lifting it up. Um, which would you rather have land on your head, this or that? So certainly when we come up with an equation for gravitational potential energy, I bet you mass is in it. Bigger mass, more energy, more hurt. I'll bet you height is in it, because if I raised it higher, it would hurt even more. Chemical potential energy. Gunpowder is a great example of chemical stored energy. Uh, your food, the food that you eat, is all chemical stored energy. Your body breaks that down, stores it in your cells, and your cells can transform that into kinetic energy to move your arms, to move your heart. It can transform it into heat. Your blood temperature is all regulated at a certain level. Other forms of energy, sound energy, elastic energy, that's the elastic, the energy stored in a rubber band. Nuclear energy, that's the energy stored inside of a nucleus. All sorts of different types of energy. If there is a way for an object to exert a force over a distance, if it has the ability to do work, then that object has some energy. Example four. Sometimes when we do work, we make things move. It says, fill in the proof below to find an expression for motion energy. So if an object is moving, it has energy, it has kinetic energy, what's the equation? Well, first of all, work equals force times distance. And force equals what times what from this past unit? F equals? F equals MA. So I'm going to write this as MAD. MAD, yeah. And then I'm going to get really clever here. I'm going to put a 1 half in front and a 2 right there. 
if I multiply by one half and I multiply by two, do those guys really cancel each other out? If I multiply by a half and I multiply by two, don't they cancel each other out? So I haven't changed the equation, but I got a good reason for doing this. You see, 2AD VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. What's 2AD? What's 2AD the same as if I get the 2AD by itself? I can replace the 2AD with a VF squared minus VI squared. And if your initial velocity is zero, you get a half mv squared. See it? That's the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. You don't realize it yet, but that equation there has a huge impact on athletics because of the squared, because of the squared. So, hockey, who's my hockey players here, okay? Hockey stick, if I want to give more kinetic energy to the puck, I can make the stick twice as heavy, that will let me give it twice as much energy. Or I can swing twice as fast, now if I swing twice as fast, that two actually gets squared, I'll have four times as much energy. Have sticks gotten heavier or lighter over the past few years? Why lighter? Because it's all about velocity. The more velocity you can, the faster you can swing your stick, the V is squared, that gives you way more bang for your buck. Otherwise, why wouldn't you just make a stick out of aluminum like a baseball bat in college? Well, you want it lighter to get more speed. Tennis rackets, tennis rackets have gotten lighter over the years, but the serves have gotten harder. Why? Again, if you double the mass, you'll have twice as much energy. But if you double the velocity, because the two gets squared, you'll have four times as much kinetic energy. It'll go four times faster. It'll go four times faster. Car accidents. If you're in a car accident at 20 kilometers per hour versus a car accident at 40 kilometers per hour, twice as fast, you'll do four times more damage. If you're in a car accident at 20 kilometers per hour versus 80 kilometers per hour, what's 80 divided by 20? Four times faster, 16 times more damage. You're probably not going to live. Half mv squared. No vector symbols because kinetic energy is a scalar. By the way, just to give you some frame of reference about energy in joules, one jelly donut contains about 10 to the 6 joules of stored chemical energy. And one mosquito push-up is about 10 to the negative 13 jelly donuts. It's about one erg. Just for the nerd. Yes, that's a mosquito push-up. Yes, I looked it up. Turn the page. Let's assume it's a mosquito doing a push-up. Would that not be what a mosquito push-up is? No. Next page. So a golfer wishes to improve his driving distance. What would have more effect, doubling the mass or doubling the speed? Doubling the speed. Oh, have golf clubs gotten lighter over the past 20 years? Yes. Are people hitting it harder? Yes. And anybody, who's my golfers here? Anybody golf? Okay, so Sean and they're always talking about club head speed. That's what they're talking How do you hit hard? It's all about club head speed. Nothing to do with strength, nothing to do with how heavy the driver is. Club head speed. The more club head speed you can generate, the harder, the further the ball is going to go. Oh. Since kinetic energy is equals a half mv squared, doubling the mass gives you double the kinetic energy. Doubling the velocity gives you four times the kinetic energy. Four times the kinetic energy. 
baseball players. So I have baseball players in here. Okay, they always talk about bat speed. That's what sends the ball out of the park. Not how strong you are, not how heavy the bat is. It's all about how fast you can get the bat moving, and if you can get the bat moving faster, any increase you gain by the square of the increase, which means way more bang for your buck. Sometimes when we do work, we lift an object and we give it height energy, also called gravitational potential energy. Fill in the proof below to find an expression for height energy, also called gravitational potential energy, or PE for short. Work equals what times what? What did we say at the beginning of this lesson? Work equals what times what, Katie? Okay, so let's fill that in. Force times distance. If you're lifting something, which force are you having to resist? Mg, and we call a vertical distance a height. Gravitational potential energy is mgh. Both of those are on your formula sheet. In fact, I'm pretty sure those are the only three formulas in this whole... No, never mind. There's one, one more formula. We'll look at power in this unit. But on your formula sheet, the four formulas in this unit, work equals force times distance, kinetic energy equals a half mv squared, potential energy equals mgh, and the one for power, which we'll get to next day. Usually in this unit, we're going to focus on mechanical energy. Mechanical energy has two main types, kinetic and potential. We almost always say an object is moving or it isn't, and it has some height or it doesn't. We're going to pause here. What's your homework? You're writing a test next class sometime during your, one of your blocks. I'll do a tutorial today after school and uh, study.